Can somebody give me a voice check, please? Yes, sir. You are audible. Yes, sir, you are audible. Okay. So let's continue with our yesterday's discussion. Uh, that is our eight is to one marks. So let's start writing this first. So just type this first with eight is to one marks. Now these questions will come for like ten ten marks in the exam. So you have to be little bit careful with this. Okay. Here. One small change that is required here is this is three four then this five then we have six and seven so there are eight data lines D zero to D seven. So this is the first thing. Here we have eight inputs, and one output. Just one. Output. And then we have this truth table. So you can see the pattern that is when this is zero zero zero. That time we have D zero. And so what you can do is you can just put all diagonally ones in the truth table, and you can see that the first term will be S two bar, S one bar, S zero bar. So while writing Y, the first term will be S two bar, S one bar, S zero bar, dot D zero plus. So like this, we'll keep on writing. The so first one is zero 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 dot D zero. This is zero zero one. This is zero one zero. This is zero one one. This is one zero zero one zero one. Then we have One one zero and one 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 into D zero D one D two D three D four D five D six and D seven. Okay, you just copy this. Once you are done with this, just type done in the chat box.
Okay, are you done with this? So this is the truth table of eight is to one max. And now we will see the set. So I hope you have noted down these uh, equations. Kartik or Asmita or somebody can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can hear yes, you. Yes, sir. We can hear you. Yeah, I'm assuming that you are writing. So I'll wait for a couple of minutes. I think some of them are still joining, so that's fine. If it's a 16 is to 1 max, then there will be 16 inputs D0 to D15. There will one be your additional line. And but generally we don't make such big max. What we do is with smaller max, we can build a bigger max. So based on that, we are having some problems also. So we'll just see. In the meantime, just copy the table and if you have finished copying whatever is there on this particular slide, then just type done in the chat box. So, Omkar, Gaura, and Herman have confirmed. So, let's go ahead. So, what I'll suggest is even if you are not able to draw the truth table quickly, just write that equation below. And that equation below is from the truth table itself. The logic I have already told you you have to look at S2, S1, S0 column and multiply that with D0, D1, D2, D3. So, that is going to be your eight terms. Okay, so this is the logic for the 8 is to 1 max, and uh, that's what I have written here. So let me start with my DSH. So I think now you can all see this thing on the screens. Just closing this. You can see that there are eight inputs. And as I told you that we are using this complex gate just for our own sake. 
So either you can make this E connected to VCC or VDD, or you can ground this and make the last term OR. So either ground it and make the last term OR. So please note this. This is something that you should know. Make this last term OR E. Now, how would you draw this thing? Is I'll give you a slight shortcut for this. So, what you will do is something like this. You start with the three inputs. So, this is so I'll do it for one term for you. So, while you draw, you draw it like this. So this is S2, S3, S1. And let's say the first term is S3 bar. Then you have S2 bar. And then we have a zero bar. So all coming into the end gate. So you will draw just one end like this when you draw. When you when you are drawing the complex gate, just don't draw everything. And here like this. This is going to be your D zero. So similarly, your D one would be something like this. That is S two S one is zero bar. So that is going to be S two bar, S one bar. S zero. So show dots like this, and then finally the eighth one. We will draw all eight like this, and here. So all these eight things that will come. So similarly, we will get like these eight terms. So you draw just one or gate. Like this, and put all eight inside there. All eight terms inside. So this is the way you can just draw it, and that is going to be your. So I hope you are getting it, but while doing it in DSCH, it has to be in this fashion. While do it, while doing it in DSCH, it has to be in this fashion. So I had to build a complex gate for that, and I don't have four input OR gates. So that is why I club the first two, then the next two, and then the next two, and then the next two, and then I club the first pair with the second pair with the help of another OR gate. And then finally, I club the four uh, ors with one or here. So let us simulate this thing. So by default, the first line will be selected zero zero zero. And if you like see now, you can see that D zero will is coming at that. If I select the second line, then the Effect of first line is not there on the output. The effect of first line is not there, or rather, any other line is not there on the output, except D1. So you can see that D1 is now connected to the output, and the red lines will indicate 
on the screen that those that is the path through which the signal travels so you can see that the second or gig is second and gig is active and through the or gigs it is reaching the output so i hope this is okay pratik uh, jampana are you trying to say something or it's a typing error pratik pratik are you there I think he is having some network issue. Okay, uh, no problem. So let's go ahead with this. So I'll send you the schematic of this particular circuit. But I expect you that you complete this thing uh, in your notebooks. Those who are having DACH, they can draw it in DACH. No problem. And it is important to draw like this because. this is a like a sure shot question in the exam so you all should draw this proper is it okay so come on complete it and once you complete drawing this just write done in the chat box so in the exam you will use eight four input and gates so here you will in this much part you will use eight of them and you will use just one eight input or gate one eight input or gate so in all And three inverters here. So we will use three inverters, eight AND gates, and one eight input or gate. So I'm going back to the slide. So this thing here is four input. and and when you are giving it in dacs you have to make this e so when you do it in dacs you will have five terminals like this a b c d and e so e you can connect it to ground and write inside this a slash b slash C, uh, so not slash sorry. It has to be A and B and C because you are ending, not ORing. But the input that you are not using, you can put it in the OR. So A and B and C and D and this has to be OR. So this is important. Or the other way round, the second option that you can do. You can again take a five input complex gate. You can take this A B C D E. Uh, there is like this symbol in D S C. It's not ground. It is a V C C. So you can connect it to V C C, and in that case, you can simply write A and B and C and D and E. Now, in this case, what happens is. Here we have a dot b dot c dot d plus e, and this e is zero. This e is zero. So this is this term is like x. So x plus zero is x. And what is x? A b c d. X is a dot b dot c dot d. So that's how. You have made a four input and D. When you connect this to VCC, 
that is logic one. This is logic one. This is logic zero. So here you will have a and or a dot b dot c. A dot b dot c dot b dot e. Now e is one in this case. So what I get is a dot b dot c dot b dot one. So by and law, let's say this is x, x dot one is x. So what is going to be the output here? Simply a dot b dot c dot. So there are two ways of looking at it. Same thing. You can use any one on this complex data. So first I did is I odd these two, then I odd these two, then I odd these two because I don't have a bigger gate, okay? And just to see the signals how they are flowing, I prefer it like this. You can also use one five input or and one three input or and then or it using a two input or that is also fine. But just to maintain some kind of symmetry, I am using this combination so that you can clearly see how the signals are flowing. So this together, so all this, all this together is one eight input. Or all this together is one eight input, or and these are your eight and this. These are your eight and this. So just draw this quickly. Once you are done drawing this diagram using gates, how will you draw? If you are drawing in notebook, you will draw like this. If you are drawing in DACH, you will draw it in this fashion. We are drawing it in DSH. We will draw it in this fashion. So, any doubts? Please unmute and ask. No problem. Once you are done with this, just type done in the chat box quickly, write quickly. Asmita and Kumam are the first one to complete it. Uh, I'll wait for another one minute. If you are noting down some critical points, see whatever I am writing na, with my digital pen. Those are important points. So please note down. So every time I am sending you two files, one is one PPT is 
so a ppt on which i have scribbled something and the other one is without the scribbling so i suggest you should use the one which is there without scribbling but just for what i have written you can use the other one so i hope you are receiving both of them okay ashish is done so let's go to the next uh hiram gaurav fine so let's go ahead now here you can see that this is a 8 is to 1 mux with an enable pin this is a 8 is to 1 mux with an enable pin so what you can note here is that in the previous circuit this e i was grounding this e i was grounding but now the e terminal the e terminal of each four input so this is this is what four input and so the enable pin is connected to this fifth input of the and gate and now on this you can see what i have written here is a and b and c and d and e this time e is used as enable it is used as enable pin that means if i want to enable or disable this mux completely that time i will use this so let's go to the schematic and see how this thing looks with enable so you can see this and the simulating it so on your screens you can see some red and blue lines and enable is zero for now you can see that enable pin is not on so whatever i do here whatever i do here i and do whatever i want you can see my output is not changing at all why because the mux is disabled the moment i enable this you can see something comes at the out the moment i connect the enable something comes at the out so enable is actually enabling the connection between input and output we sometimes what happens is at any given point of time at least one input is connected to the output because even if you give here 0 0 0 so what happens is d0 gets connected to the output but what if i don't want even that to happen so what i have to do is i have to put a enable pin so once i enable i'll get this so exactly previous circuit similarly previous what we have done in the previous circuit now what additional thing you have to do in this is you have to add one enable pin that's it you have to add one extra line and connect the enable pin and this will be your enable so that's what i have done so those who are doing it on the schematic for them it will be slightly simpler because you can just save the circuit save as and add one extra line there and just delete all the grounds or vcc's and connect the e to it okay So just I am resizing it just so that you can see things clearly. So please copy this. Once you have copied this in your notebook, write mux with enable done. 
write max with enable done. So now in this case, we are having this complex logic gate. So it is having A, B, C, D, and E. But this time, this E is neither connected to ground nor it is connected to VCC. It is going to be connected to enable pin. And the function on this will be A and B and C and D and E. Any questions in this, please unmute and ask. You can consider making the symbol of this not you want you can go to file and say schema to new symbol so by default it is giving you something so you can put your s1 down so that is the s2 also i want it down and then i want a zero on the downside Output is okay, fine. Just refresh it, and we also have an enable pin so that I can put at the top actually. So, fine. So let me put this enable pin somewhere at the top one. Then we have D0 is 3, D1 is 4, D2 is 5, D3 is 6, you can put. D4 is 7, D5 is 8, D6 is 9, and D7 is 10. Okay. That's what we can do. Or right, let's shift everything by one at the top. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and this is nine. 
and you can refresh it. So you have an enable pin and you have other pins as well. And if you want this output to come a little bit down, you can change the position to 5 approximately. So it comes down. Uh, and you can say OK. And once you say OK, you can go to insert uh, user symbol. And just now we have created one symbol. Is the symbol, and now you can see here that this is the symbol of the mux. And let's say that this heading, this heading which is there at the top, it is to one mux with enable. You want to look at that. Then you can change the position of X and Y. So let me try to make this 200 or something. So it went down. So you can get it here. If, I, if you want to change the X part of it, then probably you can make this as. 100 or something. So this looks a little bit nicer. And you can again, so now if I want to use it is to one mux. I will use only this thing. I will, I will not use anything else. I have my eight buttons. Just connect buttons, nothing else. No gates, nothing. Just one black box with the buttons. That's it. And just one output. And some more buttons for this thing. Uh, so now you can see the first one is basically the enable, and the second one is. Zero. Okay. E one. It is D two. It is D three. D four. D five. Just making it similar to the previous one, D6, then we have D7, and this is, like I said, S2, S1, and S0, and this is, I think, the Y. So this is the thing. So here we have your actual mux with the gates and all. So let's simulate both and check if I for this the first line gets selected or not. Let me enable this. Let me enable this also. And if I create this, you can see the output. So same outputs. I enable the second line. So 
So I have to write one here. The same. So what I mean to say is that later on, if I want to use this mux in some other application, I will use the symbol. I will not start making this entire thing. It is ridiculous to make all this thing again and again. It is easier to work with a black box. So this is what. So a designer should know how to design this. So this is called as the schema to the symbol. It is nothing but a schema to the symbol. So a black box enable. Let's see. Then select the second line. So if this is done, so this was just for your explanation. You can make this schema later on. Let's move ahead with the next circuit. That is demultiplexer. So multiplexer was. Max was many to one. D multiplexer, on the other hand, will be one to many. One to. So let's look at this. So whatever is there on this side, there are only two three points. So you should take it down immediately. D multiplexer is a combinational switching circuit. Combinational switching. Why we call it as a switching circuit? Because we are switching between the inputs or outputs based on the control signals and performs inverse operation as that of the multiplexer. Inverse operation as that of the multiplexer. The demultiplexer circuit selects the output line. It selects the output line. If you recollect, multiplexer selects the input line. Mux selects the input line, but demultiplexer selects the output line using selection control and directs the input to one of the. output line so that's where we say the meaning of this is directs the input to one of the output that is directs this one input to one of the many outputs that is what a demultiplexer does a demultiplexer consists of one input line and two raised to n output line one input line and two raised to n output line so what is n n is number of select lines or i'll say control signals the combination of n select lines determines an output line to be selected from Two raised to n output line. So this is point number four is something similar to mux. Point number four is something similar to mux. So write these points, then we'll go ahead. So when they ask you something about D multiplexer, just write these four points. Then the symbol of the multi multiplexer, then the truth table, and then finally the actual circuit.
yeah so have you down have you copied this thing kartik anushka or somebody can you confirm should i wait or should i go ahead start okay so i'll go ahead so this is the symbol one input and many outputs one input and many outputs so like i said we always start from zero and go up to 2 raised to n minus 1 we always start with zero and go up to 2 raised to n minus 1 not from 1 to 2 raised to n And similarly here also zero to n minus one. Zero to n minus one is n lines. And zero to two n minus one is two raised to n lines. So quickly copy this thing. Yes, Smita has done it. Quickly copy the diagram for the DMOX. Just to recollect, my MOX was this way. My MOX was this way, and DMOX is other way round. so just it shows the direction in which the outputs and inputs are flowing this symbol means that there is a imbalance on both side that means the number of inputs and outputs are not the same the number of inputs and outputs are not the same Okay, Yash has also completed it, but I'll give another one minute all to complete. So let's go ahead. So please note, inside this symbol, many times students in a hurry they write two is two raised to n is to one max. No, it is one is to two raised to n max. A d max, sorry. So when it comes to max, it is. Two raised to n is to one. That is many to one. And when it comes to d max, it is one is to two raised to n. So this thing crosses like this. So please note that and don't do a mistake here in writing two raised to n is to one. Otherwise, your nomenclature will go wrong. Right. First one. So what we did is two is to one max. Now we will do one is to two d max, one is to four d max, and finally one is to eight d max. Will be something similar. So this is the symbol. Start copying this, and this is the truth table. So what is the meaning of that? If the input is one, and if my select line is zero. Then at the output I will get d zero. At the output I get d zero means what? My d zero is going to be coming at the output. If my select line is one, my d one is going to be coming out at the output. If this input is zero, then this will be zero. If this input is zero, then this will also be 
three. So what it means is, if my select line is zero, D zero gets selected, and whatever that is there at the input, either logic zero or logic one, will come at the output. If my input here is one, then whatever this input may be, that is going to come at the output. Now D zero will be disabled. D one, this input will now come at D one. That is the meaning of this tool. So, anyways, this is the diagram for it. And since we have now two outputs, D zero and D one, in a mux we had only one output. In D mux we have many outputs. So, the number of outputs, if there are two outputs, then you will have two equations. If there are four outputs, you will have four equations. If you have eight outputs, you will have eight equations. So, the two outputs are D zero. And D one, so D zero, D zero is going to be simply first one S zero is zero, so S zero bar dot I in S zero dot I in. So if S zero is zero, it will be S zero bar dot I in. Otherwise, it will be S one S zero dot I in. Now just to uh, so you can copy down this circuit, but I'll give you some time. Just let us look at the simulation. Um, yeah. So this is your one is to two D max. So I'll just simulate it. Now you can see S zero is zero, so that is why the first line has got selected. So now whatever I give here will come at D zero. Whatever I give here will come at D zero. If my S zero is one, whatever I give at the input will now come at D one. Whatever I give at input will come at D one. So you can assume that this is like the input is like one train line. And these are two platforms. So, on which platform we should send the train depends upon the control signal S zero. And MUX is the other way round. We have two platforms. Now we want to send the train one by one on one single track. So, for that we have many platforms and one output. So that is many to one. So this is how the circuit works. Going back to the slide. So please copy this. Once you have finished copying this, you can just say "tt done." You can write "tt done." See in DLDA, you need lot of writing practice. Okay, solving is very important. Before I even start this uh, lecture or even if I I make these PPTs, I myself solve many other different things. So even you are expected to solve many problems. You can start solving from these PPTs itself, or you can pick up any book and just keep on solving. Okay, so let's go to the next one. One is to four D multiple. One is to four D multiples. So symbol is pretty simple. Now you can see there are four outputs and one extra a select line has been added. So to control four outputs, that is, we require N H two. And again, my input is just one. This is the truth table. So 
again something similar that this input will come at d0 for s1 s0 as 0 0 the same input will come at d1 d2 d3 for different combinations of s1 and s0 so you can now expect d0 is whatever is the value of s1 s0 so here it is 0 0 that is why i wrote here s1 bar s0 bar into in into i here it is 0 1 into i here it is 1 0 into i here it is 1 1 into i so here don't add them up don't add them up don't addition is not allowed because these outputs are separate this is not like a mux it is one to many not many to one so do not even think about adding d0 d1 d2 and d3 they are four independent outputs and i in can be routed to d0 d1 or d2 or d3 with the help of select lines s1 and s0 okay so copy this and i want you all now to uh implement the circuit for this and In the meantime, if anybody has a doubt in the output equations, in the truth table, whatever, please ask. okay so if you have finished i will go ahead these are all direct questions in the exam they will ask you the explanation of mux dmux sometimes they ask you a combination like they will ask you explain 1 is to 4 dmux and 4 is to 1 mux or sometimes they will ask you explain 8 is to 1 mux only with truth table circuit diagrams and proper output equation so it depends and then they will also go one level above and they will give you problems based on mux and dmux so there will be some problems
Can we done? Have you all copied this? Please reply in the chat box. Okay, Pratamesh. Pratamesh, please keep a watch on the equations because sometimes the bar or something can go here and there. So we will correct it before I send the PPT to all. Yes, sir. Okay. okay, so let's go ahead. This is the circuit. Now, what you can see here is that as compared to a MUX, as compared to a 4 is to 1 MUX, what are the changes that you can see? So S1 and S0 lines are still there. Your four AND gates are still there. So what is it that is new? You can see OR gate in output is removed. OR gate in output is removed. To make outputs independent, to make outputs independent. And what have we done at the input side? All inputs were separate before. Now all inputs are shorted. All inputs are shorted. You can see all this is shorted. And the same input goes to each and every gate. So this is what we have actually done. Now let me show you the simulation and then you can copy this. Set. So first we will see without enable and then with enable is okay. I mean, it's just a matter of increasing one input. So let me now simulate this. So I'll just keep this as one so that I can route that input anywhere I like. So can you see when I did this zero one, it came to the second line. When I did it one one, it came to the third line. When I set it one zero, it came to two. So the same input is routed at any one of the outputs and if you want all this with strobe that is also possible so that is just by adding one strobe terminal but now this gate has to be a four input and gate and i already told you how to make a four input and gate and you can see now that Whatever I do here with the input or the control signals, my output do not change unless my strobe or enable is one. Now, once strobe is one, it will behave like a normal D max. You can see 0, 1 is D1, 1, 1 is D3, and 1, 0 is coming to D2. So, this is basically the working of with strobe and without strobe. So I want you to copy this thing and okay, Shubham has shown us something great. Let's check. Yes, Shubham, it is right. Yes, diagram is correct. Now, uh, uh, Shubham, what you can do is you can try this thing, same thing with strobe. You can just try this thing with strobe, but you will have to delete these AND gates, add one extra strobe line, and you will have to use that complex gate in which the last uh, input E is either 1 or 0. So that is what you will have to do. Good. Very good.
okay so once you copy this circuit just say circuit done i'll be sending you all these files after the lecture but trying yourself is a different fun okay asmita is writing very fast asmita still will wait for 2 minutes for others uh all should also note down as a note as compared to 4 is to 1 marks what we did don't write what i am writing in the exam okay as compared just because you know something just don't start writing it is just for your understanding the circuit is more or less the same only i removed the or gate from the output and i shorted the input so precisely the hardware required for mux and dmux is not very different they are the inside story is the same that is why we can think about reprogramming the same hardware all we need to do is reprogram the connection okay let's go ahead now this is 1 is to 4 dmux switch strobe come on draw this switch strobe now if you are drawing it in notebook then this gate you can draw it like this just draw a four input gate like this 1 2 3 that's it don't draw a box and write equation so the first and gate will be like x1 bar Just copy this. Shubham, I think you can just add one strobe, and that should do the job. Okay, so I hope you have copied this thing. So let's go to one is to eight Dmux and so the first equation will be 
B0, S2 bar, S1 bar, S0 bar, I mean. Second one will be S2 bar, S1 bar, S0, I mean. Third will be B2. So we have B3. B4, B5, B6, and then we have B7. So just take these three inputs and end it with B0 or B1 or B2, B3, B4, B5, B6. So once you draw this, right, it is done in the chat box. So I come to know that you have implemented this thing. In the meantime, if there are any doubts, please unmute and ask. Asmita, Anushka, are you understanding all these things? They are pretty mechanical. Yes, sir. If you understand one, what about Anushka, Rani? Are you, have you understanding Aryan, Atharva? Deepak, Diwali. Yes, Krishna sir. Prasad. Krishna Prasad. I have not spoken to you for a long time. How are you? Yes, sir. I'm understanding, sir. Okay. Thoda beach beach mein bolte jao. Sir, I can connect. Okay, okay. I can understand, but uh, okay. Okay, good. Okay, Darshan has finished it. So this is like pretty mechanical. Now I think you should be able to draw 1 is to 8 DMUX on your own. Uh, it is important to understand that the circuit will be complex. It will not be very simple, but you have to design it only once. Once you design it and make a black box of it, I think then you don't have to design it ever again in your life. So once the designing has to be done, and that's how it is also done in the industry, but once we design something, we create symbols, and then we only play with symbols. So you do schematic, you do your uh, testing, and once everything is fine, and you can use that symbol directly. So why I am showing you this making of the symbol, making of the schematic, because later on, uh, when you come to college, in my lab, uh, in M201, uh, we are having a cadence software. So in cadence, you can design your own uh, symbols and you can create your own circuits and simulate them. So let's go ahead. So this is the 1 is to 8 DMUX. Uh, I have used a stroke control here directly. So on this, so this is a five input 
and git five input and git and eight of them and you can see there is no or git no or git and directly we have the inputs so actually speaking this b0 becomes s2 bar s1 bar s0 bar then we have probe dot dot and we have in so actually d0 depends on these five terms similarly b1 would be s2 bar s1 bar s0 strobe so strobe and in are common to all the terms what will change is the combination of s2 s1 and s0 Okay, so copy the circuit, and once your circuit is done, so here you will just draw a five input and gate. So here, so this thing will be simply an and gate with five terms. A B C D. So those who are drawing in the notebook, instead of those complex gates, you will draw five input and gate. So once you copy this, just write circuit done in the chat box. Okay, are you done with the circuit? Karthik, Anushka, Ashmira, are you done with the circuits? Yes, sir. Mandar. Yes, sir. Done. Okay. So let's go ahead and see another class of. Uh, mux like circuit i will say that is called as a decoder so decoder is a multiple input multiple output combinational logic circuit so mux was many to one dmux was one to many now can we have many to many that is the question so answer is yes that is decoder is a multiple input multiple output combinational digital circuit that converts n number of coded binary inputs into 2 raised to n number of coded binary outputs 
so there is a restriction that n number of coded binary inputs into n to n number of coded binary outputs that means in the viva we may ask you if n is 3 then how much should be the number of coded outputs so if you say 5 that is wrong it has to be always 2 raised to 3 that is 8 so this 3 is linked with this 8 So any other combination is usually not possible. Though we can design different other than decoder circuits to do that. Usually decoder produces a unique output corresponding to each input pattern. So this is a very important thing. It produces a unique output. So every time you give the input, you will get the same output. So corresponding to each input pattern. the enable input is used to control or select the decoder so sometimes we have a microprocessor new p and to that there are some address lines connected now what we want is we want to latch the address so for that we will use a mux or a decoder and once that latching is done then first the address comes and then the data so on the data lines we can now send the data on to the address so there we have memory so memory is connected to two thing one is address and the other one is data when you want to store something in the memory you require two thing one is address and data and always first is address and then is data because uh, if you want to send a letter or if you want to send a email first you have to write something in two or you have to write the address and then only the postman will pick up that particular uh, letter or that email will be shot to that particular person so while doing such operations these decoders are widely used so please note down these points so mux was again i am reinstating it was 2 raised to n is to 1 this was 1 is to 2 raised to n decoders will be n is to 2 raised to n decoder will be n is to 2 raised to n so don't confuse between mux and dmux mux is 2 raised to n is to 1 dmux is 1 is to 2 raised to n But decoder will be n is to two raised to n. So I think the equation themselves will tell us the difference. They might look similar, but please understand what they are actually doing. Once you copy these three points, just write done in the chat box. Okay, yes.
Okay, let's go ahead. So take down the block diagram of the decoder. So to operate the decoder, my enable has to be one. If your enable is zero, then decoder doesn't operate. If EM is zero, all the outputs of decoder are statically fixed to logic zero. If EM is zero, all the outputs of the decoder are statically fixed to logic zero, like in the case of MUX and DMUX. So we can see here there are many inputs and there are many outputs. So decoder is many to many. Copy this and please note the number of inputs are always n, and here we have 2 raised to n minus 1. This has to be 2 raised to n. This is not 2 raised to n minus 1, it has to be 2 raised to. So let's go to the types of decoders. One is to two decoder. Note down this. Just add like this one here. So whatever A is, either 0 or 1, does not matter. Y0 and Y1 both will be 0 because enable is 0. And the moment enable becomes 1, So the moment this is zero, B1, this is zero, this is one, this is going to be zero. Uh, 
or rather you can view it this way Just a minute. So, uh, if you want to like have some similarity between decoder and DMUX, you can simply say that I in is now E N. I in is nothing but enable. I in is nothing but enable. You can see that here we had I in instead of enable. But now we are having the enable thing. So there is no input as such; only the connection path is being taken care of. So let's see the working of this. Slightly different. Two is to four decoder. Oh, sorry, I wanted one is to four. Now you simulate this thing. So if enable is zero, you know nothing will come at the output. Both outputs are zero. But if enable is one, then you can see that the output will change with the input. If I give a zero, I'll get y zero. If I give a one, I'll get y one. So now you can draw this. In this circuit here, if enable is one, then this both becomes one, and the AND gates get activated. So this enable is used to activate AND gates. And Then the output will be your output purely depends on the. So here we have one input, and here we have two outputs. That is why one is to two decoder. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Please clearly write this output y zero. Y zero is one only when enable is one and A is zero, and Y one is one only when enable is one and A is one. So that is zero one E N. So. This is the case. If you want, just I'll add another line to it. And just add one line for our own understanding. And 
which enable is zero, doesn't matter what a n one a n b outputs are always going to be zero. You can take down this particular this table and start implementing the circuit also. So, if you have already designed this in DSCH, it will be easier for you to write because you have to just save a file and do some minor changes. And your typing speed is always more than your writing speed. Okay, so let's go to the circuit. So here we have the so y zero will be a bar b bar e n will be a bar b e n this will be a b bar e n So if enable becomes one, all AND gates will get activated. One, one, one. So here we have A and B, right? So rather A bar and B bar. So the output of this, so the moment this becomes one, this will become simply A bar dot B bar dot one, which is A bar dot B bar. So the output only depends on the output y zero only depends on a and b, so that is the only job of the enable pin. But if you can see, if you can see, it is connected similar to an input in the DMUX, but we are now calling it as enable. So there are two inputs. And four outputs. Therefore, we say two is to four. To four. So please copy this circuit. Once you copy this, write circuit done. C K T done. In the meantime, I can take some questions. Okay, Asmita, I'll give another couple of minutes for you all to note down.
okay so let's go ahead so 3h to 8 decoder something similar So here also I will add one extra line. Whatever may be the value of A, B, and C, Zero slash one. I'm going to write zero slash one. Zero slash one. And all outputs will be zero. So again, three inputs and one output. So I think this you can do on your own. It's not a big deal. Uh, something similar. These are your outputs. Five of them. So I think you can note down till the outputs and circuit you can draw later on. Three to eight decoder. So if enable is zero. Then everything is zero. Has got no meaning. This is zero. All these outputs will become zero. And for when enable is one, then the switching action actually takes. Now let's do problems based on that. So write down the first problem. So all these are exam problems, okay? Right. Implement the following function using eight is to one map. Implement the following function using eight is to one map. That is f of a b c d. Or rather, you can just write f of a b c. Don't write b. F of a b c is summation m two four five and seven. So first, what you have to do is write step one, draw the mux. Step one, you draw the mux. So they have told us implement the following function using eight is to one mux. So first we draw eight is to one mux. So let us draw this together. Come on, draw this. Then they have told us that the output should be one for two, four, five, and Seven. The output should be one for two, four, five, and seven because what is given to us is the min terms. Min terms means 
at these positions 2 4 5 and 7 we want us that the output should be 1 so for that what we should do is we should connect those pins to logic 1 and other than that to logic 0 so what is other than this other than this is 0 1 3 Four, five is there, then six. So what we will do is two, four, five, and seven pins. I will connect to VGD or VCC, and one, three, zero, one, three, six pins. I will connect it to ground. So these pins should be connected to VGD, and this pin zero, one, three, six should be connected to. so what it obviously means is we require one vgd and we require one ground so that is why i first draw one vgd line i first draw one vgd line followed by one ground line followed by one ground line now as i said 2 4 5 7 should be connected to logic 1 so 2 5 and 7 should be connected to logic 1 so logic 1 is vgd and ground is logic 0 so 0 1 3 should be connected to ground so now you connect 0 to ground Then you connect one to ground. Then you connect three to ground, and then you connect six to ground. So this is going to be your final set. Come on, draw this, draw this, and connect the inputs to VCC and ground in this way. now some books will write vcc and some books will write vgd vcc or vgd they both are power supply or rather dc power supply and they both represent logic one so doesn't matter what you call them but ground is ground ground is always zero So if you have completed this, just write done in the chat box so that we can go to the next sum. So in DSCH, what you should do is let's go to this circuit. I'll just open my eight is to one mux. With enable or without enable doesn't matter. and i can anything that you like so i'll open with enable because in that i had just saved the schematic okay so let's look at this part slightly in detail so what i'm doing now is my enable will be 1 and instead of uh, these buttons instead of the buttons what i can do is i'll just copy this entire circuit and make here Oh, 
oh my god what has happened okay something has happened doesn't matter copy this here and I will zoom it for you so I had already designed the mux so see how I am using it now my enable and control signals all are the same now I am using two pins. One is VCC and the other one is ground. Okay. So I am drawing two lines here. One like this, one in this fashion. And which were one now? Which were the line which were one, two, four, five, seven were one. So two, four, five, and seven were one, and all others were zero. So you can connect them to zero. In this way and now let's simulate so you can see I'm first enabling the mux and just by giving two zero one uh, sorry zero one zero that is two for two my output is one for four my output is one for five my output is one and for seven my output is one for others, my output is going to be zero. So this is the way to actually implement the logic function, given logic function with the help of mux. Now, uh, why this technique is so easy? Because uh, if I told you to implement this logic function with the help of uh, probably, a, what do you say, a k-map, then you will have to do a K map, right? You'll have to solve something like this. You'll have to solve something like this 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, and 1, 0, and 0, 1, 2. Zero, one, two, three, and 4, 5, 6, 7. So, you will have to do something like this, a pair, a pair, and one isolated cell. So you can either implement this with a ready-made multiplexer chip, or you can actually use gates and solve this particular problem. So there are two approaches. You can solve this by using MUX, and you can solve this by k -man. Now you can see, when you use a MUX, it is just a matter of connecting VDD and ground. It is just a matter of conducting VDD and ground. Because you already have the MUX chip. But alternatively, if you want to use K-map, then you have to solve the K-map, take the right uh, pairs, isolated cells, pods, whatever, and then develop a hardware, and then again implement the circuit in something like this fashion, and do this. So that is also an option for us. So in the exam, if they specifically say using 8 is to 1 mux, then you have to implement it using 8 is to 1 mux only. Don't apply your brain and do it using KMAP. Okay. So I hope you have copied this. Let us go to the next problem. Okay. Implement the following function using 16 is to 1 mux using 16 is to 1 mux. Now can you solve this? So first we will require 1 16 is to 1 mux. First draw the symbol of 16 is to 1 mux. And out of this from 0 to 15, 
टू फोर फाइव सेवन टेन फोर्टीन विल गो इन लॉजिक वन दैट इज वीसीसी और वीडीडी एंड अदर टर्मिनल्स विल गो टू ग्राउंड सो वी हैव सम टर्म्स हियर टू फोर फाइव सेवन टेन एंड फोर्टीन आर द गिवन टर्म दिस वी विल कनेक्ट टू VCC and other than this, other than this, which are possible? Zero, one, three, six, eight, nine, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fifteen. So these need to be connected to ground. So that's what I am doing. First, I will draw VDD line. First, I will draw VDD line. Then I will draw ground line. And then I will connect two, four, five, and seven, ten, and fourteen. they are all connected to logic 1 and remains whatever remains simply connect to logic 0 simply connect to logic 0 okay so this is like a sometimes they ask this question for around 10 marks Sometime, but they will ask you definitely such questions for six to eight months. So be ready for that. And you can see that there is nothing inside it, absolutely nothing. It's just a matter of connecting some terms to VCC and ground. They may ask you this question in connection with another mux. That is, explain eight is to one mux, or explain four is to one mux. and hence solve the given equation with a certain mux so they may ask you like this and make it a 10 marks question if you have copied this circuit then just say done in the chat box please note that since this is a 16 is to 1 mux there are four inputs and at four not inputs four select lines And two raised to n, that is two raised to four, that is sixteen and four. In fact, select line is also like an input, but we don't call it as an input. The arrow is always going in, so it is like an input, but it's a special input for switching action. Okay, let's go to the next problem. implement two input and an or gates implement two input and an or gates using 4 is to 1 mux Wait just a minute. I'm just using it. So first, you draw four is to one mark. And draw VCC and ground lines. Now, if you recollect AND gate, if the two inputs are let's say S one and S zero, zero 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 one one 
zero and one one. What was the output expected? Zero 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 one. That means for one one, that is three. This is zero one two and three. So zero has to be connected to zero. One has to be connected to zero. Second input also has to be connected to zero. Third input has to be connected to one. So first three are connected to zero. The last three, last third input is connected to logic one. So this circuit behaves like a two input AND gate. Now we can implement a gate using a MUX. That is the beauty of a MUX. <laughs> We we could implement mux using gate, but now we can also implement a gate using a mux. In fact, we can reprogram. We can reprogram its input and make a single mux to behave like all the different gates. So similarly for OR gate, again VDD and ground, and OR gate truth table is like this. S one S zero and output is zero one one one. Zero 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 one one zero and one one. So now you can see last three inputs are one. So that is the reason why last three inputs I made it one, and the first one I made it zero. So this is nothing but a two input or gate. So quickly copy this. Now you can try for NAND and NOR gate. And also try for XOR and XNOR gate. Two input NAND and NOR, two input XOR and XNOR. So we will complete all the gates using this, and then we will take a fifteen minutes break. So I am going ahead with. the the circuits so i hope this is clear if there is any doubt in this you can just ask so you can see that this will always be 0 0 0 1 and if i give 0 0 here i'll get one at down if i give 0 1 i'll get again 0 if i give 1 1 then only i'll get one at the So basically, mux behave will behave like a gate when I permanently connect few of its input to VDD and ground. Similarly, here also it's zero, one, one, one. This is the OR gate. Okay, next, let's look at NAND and NOR gates. Again. You start with a mux, four is to one mux, and write the truth table of NAND. So NAND is exactly opposite of AND. So first you draw VGD and ground, and S one, S zero, and output. So zero zero one one, zero one zero one, and output will be one one one. Zero. So first three inputs will be one, and the last one will be. This is a NAND gate. Similarly, for NOR, we have S one, S zero, and Y. So NOR will be opposite of OR. So the first one will be connected to VDD, and all other three will be connected to ground. So zero is connected to VDD, and all other three are connected to ground. So please copy the NAND and NOR gates, and similarly try XOR and XNOR. Similarly, try XOR and XNOR.
So I'm going for XOR and XNOR now. Again this. And what is the truth table for XOR and XNOR? S1, S0 and Y. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. 0, 1, 1, 0. This is the truth table for XOR. So first and last, 0 and 3, I will connect it to 0. And 1 and 2, I will connect it to VVD. So this is XOR. And exactly opposite of this will be XNOR. So if you interchange the connections, that will be XNOR. So I hope you are understanding the usage of MUX. It is not just to switch between the input and the output, but you can implement logic functions. You can implement gates. Now there is a very typical uh, problem which can come that we will discuss after the break. What if you are having an 8 is to 1 MUX, but you want to implement a logic function which requires four variables. That means eight is to one mux is easily possible for three variable functions. But I don't have a 16 is to one mux. I have only a eight is to one mux on which I have to implement a larger function. So that also as an engineer, we should be able to do or figure out a solution for that. And that is what we will discuss after the break. So now it is 12.9. We will be exactly back at 12.25. We will be back at 12.25. So I am just leaving this slide the same way. And we will all be back at 12.25. Thank you. 
Okay, so let's start with the next session. And uh, the problems that we are going to do now are uh, really going to be very important. Uh, before I just go ahead, Karthik, or somebody can give me audio check, please. Yes, sir, you are audible. Okay. So uh, now let us start with the next problem immediately. In the exam, this is a very typical question. With the help of two four is to one max, with the help of two four is to one max, how can we build eight is to one max? With the help of two four is to one max, how can we build eight is to one max? So, uh, in this.
So in this, we have to start with two four is to one max. We have to start with two four is to one max and go up to eight is to one max. So how do we do that? So first is okay. So let us do this together. Let us do this together. First, you draw two maxes. Two four is to one max. Draw four is to one max. Two of them. So quickly draw. Quickly draw that. So once you have drawn this now, you will connect the lines like this. That is select lines. Now four is to one max. Four is to one max. We'll have two select lines, S one and S zero. Similarly, the other four is to one max will have. Two select lines, S one and S zero. So what you will do now is you will short S one with S one of the upper max and the lower max, and then S zero with S zero of both the max. So that is what you will do, and then take out a line like this, that is S one and S zero from both the terminals. S two, please note. Now we are using a max. We are using a four is to one max to build a eight is to one max. So to do this, we have to use four is to one max with enable. We have to use four is to one max with enable. So if en, so this is let's say max number one, and this is max number two. So if en is zero, max one gets selected. If en is one, max two gets selected. If en is zero, max one gets selected. If if en is one, max two gets selected. Okay. So draw it with me. So you will take out s one and s zero. After drawing s one and s zero. You will connect S two because eight is to one max means it will have eight inputs and three control signals. So S one and S zero we got from four is to one max. S two will be connected to the enable pin, and the same S two will be connected to the another enable pin with the help of a NOT gate. With the help of a Not gate. Come on, do this. Have you completed this till this point? Yes. Asmita, yes, sir. yes, sir. Okay. So all of you might have done this much connections. So here you can see there are two outputs, Y one and Y two, because each mux will have one output. But we want only one output. So that is the reason why what we do is we put a OR gate. We put a OR gate and we. Take a input output that is y. So what you can see now is what you can see now is that an eight is to one max. An eight is to one max must have one output. 
So are we having that one output? Yes. It should have three control lines. Are we having those control lines? Yes. And are we having eight data lines? So the answer is yes. D0 to D1, D2, D3. And this will act as D4, D5, D6 and D7. Okay. So this is how you implement a 4 is 8 is to 1 mux using a 4 is to 1 mux. So this is the figure for what? Implementation of 8 is to 1 mux using 2 4 is to 1 So sometimes, sometimes some mux come with enable bar. Sometimes some mux come with enable bar. That is an active low signal. So in that case, what happens is this not gate, I will remove from here and I'll put it here. So when I give a zero here, I'll get a one here. So with one, the first mux should get. So when en is zero or one mux one should get selected and when en is one mux one should get selected and when en is zero mux two should get selected so in that case we can put the inverter here so let me go to digital schematic let's see whether we can Implement something like this. Let's see 4 is to 1 mux. We will require an enable pin. So I'll open a 4 is to 1 mux. And uh, what I will do is I will generate the schema to the new symbol. I will generate a schematic and you can see enable, let's put it in, uh, we'll start it. Why are there? It is B1. Okay, all I can say make a schema to the new symbol. So I'm just make it a bit back. Why I'm getting two S ones? S1, S1, S0. Why there are two S1? I can understand that. Let me just check. Okay. There was one on top of the other. Just a minute. That's one. Let me just save it. And say schema to new symbol. Okay. So now I have got one S1. So this I'll put it at the down. So I'll write here D. Then S0. Also D. 
Uh, then D1 enable also, I'll put it at the bottom. So D0, I'll put it in the first position, D1 second, D2 third, D4 fifth, and then enable, I'll put it slightly away from there in seven. Four and output. I'll just get it down somewhere in four and just let us check. Enable is too far. This is at six. So this is my mux. Okay, so I'll now open a new file and I would like to add the schematic that I just now made. User symbol, and I think I made a symbol right now. That is C44. And so like, like I told you, we have this symbol with us. And I'll copy this thing. Okay, this should come here, and then you can put the OR gate in the output, and you can put all buttons that you like. So very easily you can do that. So these are your four inputs. And now the time is to connect these things. So first we'll connect the output. And then we will connect our inputs. So S1, I will connect with S1. So see how I'm connecting it. And S0, I'm connecting it with S0. So similarly, you have to draw and uh, like I said, I took two wires out. So let me connect this also. This is my inputs. S1 and S0. And these are my other two inputs. So 
this is my S0. And now we have to select one of these marks. So what I do is I put the S2 here. So I'm putting a NOT gate here. Because my enable is the other enable. And one enable will connect like this. Direct. So that's your uh, 8 is to 1 mux using 2, 4 is to 1 mux. Let's simulate and see what's happening. So when you select 0, 0, 0. Can you see D1 comes at the output? So actually this is now D0. This is D1. This is D2. This is D3. Uh, then we have D4. D5, D6, and D7. Here we have D, D7. Okay, and uh, so that's it. And this is going to be your S2, S1, and here we have let's see. so this is your y1 this is your y2 and so i'll call this as y that is my final out now if you just see the moment i select s2 if i the mo when s2 is zero this is a not gate so the output of not gate is one and one is enabling the first mux so Whenever I use any of this, so let's just set some random inputs. So you can see 0, 0, 0, 0 means D0 comes at the output. 0, 0, 0, 1, that means D1 is now coming at the output. Then 1, 0, D2 is coming at the output. You can see in all the first four cases, this line will be red. If you just look, this line will be red. Now 1, 1. Again, D3 is going to be 0. And now this, the moment I select S2 is 1, output of node becomes 0. So now the lower mux gets enabled. The upper mux gets disabled. So the effect of D0, D1, D2, all this is not there now on the output. Only what you change here is going to matter. So that's how we build this mux. I'll just save this mux. Uh, I'll just save it as 8 underscore 1 using oh my god something happened. Okay, fine, that's fine. So I hope you have understood this particular circuit. Now let's go to the next one. So this is the exam problem, okay? Now with the help of two four is to one mux, with the help of two four is to one mux, implement the given function that is f of abc is this. That means what? Indirectly, they are telling us to implement a three variable function. That means there can be eight min terms. So eight min terms means we have to use eight is to one mux. But now they are indirectly telling us there are two four is to one mux. So first I will make an eight is to one mux using two four is to one mux and then connect. 
minus a zero is zero. Just let me see. Yes. I don't know what this is. So here, first we design use two mux four is to one. Then connect their S one and S zero. Then take those S one S zero out and S two is connected in such a way that at a time only one mux will be on at the enable terminal using NOT gates. Then we have VDD and ground. So we will shoot these things here. Two, four, and seven are connected on these mux. And one zero one three five or zero one three and. Uh, Six are connected on the other mux. So you can see here that actually the first mux gives me lines which are so here. This is D zero, D one, D two, D three. This is D four, D five, D six, and D seven. So you can see that this much part, this much part of the circuit is the same as before. Now only thing that I have done is I have taken out the data lines out of it. Two, four, five, and seven. And I have connected it to corresponding VDD and ground. I have connected it to corresponding VDD and ground. So this is like a simple implementation in continuation with the last one that we are using the same circuit, but now in the previous one it was just the implementation of a 8 is to 1 mux using 2 4 is to 1 mux, but in this case we are now implementing a logic function. Using two four is to one mux, the logic function has got three variables. That means there can be eight min terms. So one four is to one mux will not do because it has got only four inputs. What we are looking at is a eight input mux. So eight input mux is a eight is to one mux. And just before this, we learned how to implement eight is to one mux using two four is to one mux. So step number one was here. Step number one was implement eight is to one mux using four is to one mux, and step number two was using this using designed eight is to one mux implement. Given logic function. So this can be a logic function, or it can be min terms. Fortunately, here we are having min terms, but we have also seen how to convert a logic function to min terms. So even that is possible. Okay. So let us go to the next problem now. Do you want to copy this, Karthi Kanushka? Yes, sir. Okay. So I'll give you just exactly two minutes. Two minutes. Because the next sum is even more important, and these sums come in the exam for ten ten marks. 
Sometimes it may happen that you don't have 8 is to 1 max IC. You have 2, 4 is to 1 max IC. So you should be able to implement it. Of course, you can see you require one not gate extra, one or gate extra. So all that is there, but you can save the time of going and buying it if you have 2, 4 is to 1 max and other IC ready. Okay, so I'll just move ahead. We are having just 10 minutes left. Okay, so the next question now is implement the following function using 8 is to 1 max. Implement the following function using 8 is to 1 max. So now you can see here. This is very typical. There, how many inputs are there? Four inputs. That means with four inputs, with four control signals, I need to have two raised to four, that is 16 lines. So the function this function can be easily implemented on. 16 into 1 much directly by using just VCC and ground. But now we are expected to use this on 8 is to 1 much. So anyways, what we have to do is So this is my 8 is to 1 much. Just forget this last arrow for the time being. Okay, this is my 8 is to 1 max. Now what I will do is, everybody should draw this with me. Yeah, now. Draw a table like this. Draw a table like this. On X, we will write D0, D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, D6, D7. Now what are these D0, D1? These are my inputs of the max. D0, D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, D6 and D7. So that I will write it like this. And 8 is to 1 max, we we'll already have three control signals. So S2, S1 and S0 is already in place. But I want to find out what about S3. What about S3? Because there are going to be four inputs or four controls. So at the top, I'll write S3 bar, that is zero, and here I'll write one, S3. Now, now what you have to do is look for this particular function, which is given to us, function of A, B, C, and D. So function of A, B, C, and D means my S3 is like A, B is S2, C is S1, and D is S0. So now my output should be a function of S3, S2, S1, and S0. So here we have B, C, and D, but A I don't know. So I am writing here A bar and A. A bar and A. But just for the sake of it, we have been using S3, S2, S1, and S0. That is why I'm using the same notation. S3 and S2, S1, and S0 with S3 bar here. So if you have written this thing like this in a box, this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 in one line, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 in another line. Now what you do is, you will circle the min terms in this particular box. So what are my min terms? 2, 4, 5, 7, 10, and 14. So I will circle 2, 4, 5, 7, 10, and 14. I will circle this. 
okay once i circle this now you see wherever there is a circle there is a one so here the output is 0 0 0 0 where it is 1 1 0 0 1 0 1 0 0 1 1 and 0 putting circles mean what is the meaning of min terms they are the designer is telling us that for these combinations my output should be one so that is why i have circled those outputs where my output is going to be one or circled those combinations for which my output is going to be one now we will look at this thing vertical now we will look at this thing vertical d0 will always be zero what is the meaning of this d0 will always be zero when s3 is zero or s3 is one even if s3 is one d0 will always be zero even if s3 is zero d0 will always be zero that is why below d0 i will write a zero below d0 i will write a zero now let us go to d1 you can see here that whatever may be the value of s3 s3 may be 0 or s3 may be 1 again my output here is going to be 0 only so again here also i will write 0 now for d2 you can see we have circle 2 as well as 10 that means whatever may be the value of s3 or s1 my output will always be 1 that is why i have written 1 here similarly here i have written 0 now coming to d4 coming to d4 now you can see when s3 is 1 my output is 0 and when s3 is 0 my output is 1 that means d4 depend d4 is the complement of s3 that means d4 is the complement of S3. So I'll write here S3 bar. Then D5 is also similar to D4. So I'll write complement of S3. Now you we will look at D6. So you can see here when S3 is zero, output is zero. When S3 is one, output is one. So that is why D6 will be the same as S3. And D7 will be similar to D4 and D5. That is going to be S3 bar. So now I have come to know D0 should be connected to logic zero. D1 should be con connected to logic zero. D2 should be connected to logic one. D3 should be connected to logic zero. D4, D5, and D7 should be connected to to S3 bar. And D6. should be connected to s3 and d6 should be connected to s3 so now i require three lines only vcc and ground will not do i have to also create s3 and s3 bar so how will i create first i will create s3 then s3 bar then i'll create vgd and then i'll create ground now you can see d0 is connected to ground d1 is also connected to ground d2 is connected to vgd that is logic 1 d3 is connected to again 0 d4 is connected to s3 bar that is why you can see i connected to s3 bar to a not gate then D5 is also connected to S3 bar, and D6 is connected to S3, and finally D7 is also connected to S3 bar. So you can now see here that I removed, I could implement, I could implement, and a 16 is to one mux using. One eight is to one max. The general notion would be six. If eight is to one max, then two four is to one max. Lagta hai. 
then for 16 is to 1 mark you will require 28 is to 1 mark yes that is also an option but what if you have only one then you can implement it in this fashion so please write this sum properly please write this so i will rub certain things out of this Wherever there are circles, that is a one red circles. And wherever there are there is no circle, that output is. So I think this much. So draw this box and just draw this circuit. That's it. Any doubts in this? Please ask. Should we see one more problem instead of copying this? Let us look at one more problem so that your explanation becomes slightly easy. So I am just changing the problem. Now you can see my function is different. Implement the following function using 8 is to 1 marks. But the function requires a 16 is to 1 mark because there are 16 terms A, B, C, D. So again what I do is I start with the 8 is to 1 mark. So A is like S3, then we have S2, S1 and S0. Then I make this box like this, D0, D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, D6 and D7. Because I have only D0 to D7 with the 8 is to 1 box. I don't have more. So 1, 3, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, 15. These are 1. These are all 1. So at 1, 3, 5, 7, I will put circles. Now I will look here. Now you now you post in the chat box. What should I write here? You can see for D0, this is 0 and this is 1. Even if S3 is 0, my output is 0. If my S3 is 1, my output is 1. That means D0 is the same as S3. That means D0 is the same as S3. So I'll write here S3. Now you can see T1 is going to be 1. Why? Because whatever may be the value of S3, 0 or 1, I have circles in both the places. So my output is 1. D2, again S3, because when S3 is 0, I get 0 output. When S3 is 1, my output is 1. Here we have S3 bar. Why? Because for D3, when S3 is 0, my output is 1. When S3 is 1, my output is 0. So that is S3 bar. Then D4. S3 is 0 or 1, my output is 0 only. That is why it is permanently 0. D5 will be S3 bar. Then D6 will be 0. And D7 will be 1. So you can keep in mind like this. When there are two circles straight in one line, that time you will write logic 1. When there are no circles at all, you will write logic 0. Now, if there is only one circle, then what you should see? If there is a circle here at the top, here we have S3 bar. So, I'll write S3 bar here. And if there is just one circle below, so here we have S3. So, you will just write S3. So, whatever is there in front of it, you will write. If there are two circles, don't write anything. Write logic 1. If there are no circles, then you write 0. So now I got the logic. So first I made S3. Then I made S3 bar line. Then I made VDD line. 
then i made a ground line now i am connecting each and every. i have all the terms 1 0 s3 and s3 bar now it's just a matter of connection so d0 is connected to s3 d1 is connected to 1 d2 is connected to s3 d3 is connected to s3 bar d4 is connected to 0 d5 is connected to s3 bar d6 is connected to 0 and d7 is connected to logic 1 we could now implement a 16 is to 1 mux using very important 1 8 is to 1 mux 2 is simple 2 is just short everything s1 is 0 s2 s1 is 0 with the s2 s1 is 0 of another one and connect another s3 on the enable pin but with 1 this is the strategy so now today we learned how to implement higher order mux with a lower order mux and we have also seen how to implement a higher order mux with just one lower order mux so pathamesh yes your answer is right i did not see that okay so that is what is the day for today so there can be many more questions like this so implement the following function using 2 4 is to 1 mux so these are the main terms uh, so now we are expected to implement a 16 is to 1 mux using 2 4 is to 1 mux so what i will do is first i will build the 8 is to 1 mux and with 8 is to 1 mux i will implement a 16 is to 1 mux so this is the These are the terms for the 8 is to 1 mux, and the circuit would be somewhat like this. This is just for your reference. First, I am making a 8 is to 1 mux here. First, I am making a 8 is to 1 mux. So this is my 8 is to 1 mux, and the same logic. So, so now I have got 8 is to 1 mux. Now I have to implement a 16 is to 1 mux with this. So for that I'll require S3. I'll require S3 bar. I'll require VDD, and I'll require ground. And now D0 will be connected to ground. D1 will be connected to ground. You can see that table. I have brought it forward here in the corner. D2 is connected to one. D3 is connected to zero. Then we have D4. Then we have D5. Then we have D6. And then finally D7. So this much part so this is a Eight is to one mux, and this much part was used to convert this eight is to one mux to a sixteen is to one mux. And once we got that sixteen is to one mux, we could implement the logic function of A B C D. So that's it from my side today. Sorry for extending for ten minutes. but next time we will start with chapter number 3 that is sequential circuits and flip flops and probably end it next time itself so that's it any questions i am here for 5 minutes others can log out just let me take the attendance just wait Okay, I have taken the attendance. Now you are free to log out. Bye, bye, everybody.
हेलो सर सर आई हैड नेटवर्क इशू आई वी वर टेकिंग अटेंडेंस जस्ट नाउ सन में शेयर सर सन में बॉक्स में मेल ना ऐड योर ओके सर ओके सर ओके सर आई हैव टेकन द अटेंडेंस थ्री टाइम्स ड्यूरिंग द लेक्चर सो एनीवेयर इफ यू आर प्रेजेंट यू विल ऑटोमेटिकली गेट कैप्चर्ड अगेन सो डोंट नो नीड टू वरी अबाउट इट ओके सर ओके सर यू आर प्रेजेंट ना इन द फर्स्ट हाफ एंड ऑल यस सर यस सर या सो इट विल ऑटोमेटिकली गेट कैप्चर्ड डोंट वरी Yes okay sir thank you